A group of Muslim organizations announced today that MPs are no longer welcome in mosques unless they meet a few conditions. In an open letter, more than 300 groups said MPs must call for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. They must demand the restoration of funding for UNRWA, the main agency providing aid in Gaza. They must condemn Israel's war crimes, and they must oppose the flow of military equipment to Israel. This comes as Ramadan approaches just a few weeks from now, when some politicians choose to visit their local mosque. Stephen Brown is the CEO of the National Council of Canadian Muslims, the group that wrote this letter, and he joins me now. Stephen Brown, it's good to speak with you again. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. What are you hoping to achieve with this letter, by release, and, and why did you decide to release it now? Well, this letter is really about renewing our commitment to uphold the values of our sacred month. I mean, you know, Ramadan is really a month about feeding the hungry. It's about commitment to humanity. And, uh, and we really wanted to make sure that everybody that's coming to our sacred spaces in this holy month is really adhering to those values. So uh, for us, really, it's about celebrating Ramadan uh, in the spirit of, uh, of humanity with, uh, with, uh, with everybody. Are you targeting any particular political party with this? I mean, clearly you would like firm statements from the government, I, I, I would assume. Uh, but is there any specific party or is this really just aimed across the board? No, this is really aimed across the board. Uh, this targets uh, MPs specific of all parties. So this is not uh, one particular party. Um, this is really, like I said, just about making sure that Everybody that's really coming to the mosque during this really, really difficult time, um, you know, we're really just making sure that uh, we really want to make sure that we uh, are true to our values and, and upholding the importance of, of humanity and, uh, and really about you know, just feeding the hungry um, and other really important values to us during, uh, during this time uh, of the month uh, of the year that's really sacred to all Muslims. The Deputy Prime Minister, Christian Freeland, was asked about this today, and she reasserted the point that Canada has called for a ceasefire, voted in favor of one at the UN, uh, has temporarily cut funding to UNRWA, but has given $100 million in aid to groups in Gaza, diverted an equivalent amount to other groups. Under the positions of the Canadian government, is that good enough uh, for you and the other signatories of this letter, or are they not welcome based on what they've done to this point? Well, it is really a universal, um, organic uh, outpouring from the Muslim community from across the country. What we've seen is um, over 300 mosques and institutions have really committed to this, and the number is growing by the hour. Uh, once again, it's not really targeted towards any specific party or any specific individual. What this is really targeted towards is 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 really it's for our own community. It's just making sure that all people that come to the mosque are really uh, are, are, are working with us and celebrating with us in a spirit of humanity. So this isn't this isn't targeting any specific individual. Um, this is really about asking uh, about all those MPs who wish to come to the mosque to uh, to just sign on to a commitment to upholding basic values of humanity and celebrating the month with us. No, no, I understand that, that you're not aiming it specifically at them. But I, I know in the past, I, I've seen the prime minister has gone to mosques during Ramadan, for example. And uh, based on the conditions that are sort of laid out in the letter, I'm just trying to understand if this means he would not be welcome uh, based on where Canada is on this particular conflict and the positions the, the Liberal government has taken. Is that, am I correct in understanding that? Um, really, I, I would really look at the actual letter in question and just taking a look at what the uh, what the prime minister adheres to. I mean, there are some very basic uh, there's some very basic requests, you know, uh, requests, uh, requests really that underpin the importance of affirming the humanity of Palestinians and Muslims at this time. I mean, you know, if we look at, for example, what's happening, I mean, a, a U.N. report of 23 uh, of 23 organizations and NGOs says that all two and a half million people in Gaza right now are are hungry and half a million people are in a state of starvation um, so um, you know when we look at uh, when we look at what our community is facing our community has really faced the largest spike in Islamophobia ever since we've been taking numbers and you'd be hard-pressed to go to a mosque uh, and not find someone who either has had a family member who's died in Gaza or who's being affected by what's happening. So this is really about institutions from across the country laying out the parameters by which they feel comfortable 
bringing people into the mosque in the sacred time to share in the month of Ramadan in the spirit of brother of brotherhood and humanity. No, and, and look, and I can appreciate all of that, uh, uh, Stephen Brown. It, it's just I, I I read it and I look at it and, and I look at what I know the government has done and what the various politicians have said. But, you know, I am reluctant to assign my judgment to whether or not they have met the standard as spelled out by you and, and other members of your faith and, and your community. So I guess I'm just looking for some clarity from you as, as the organization that, that has released this about whether you think any national political leader or figure would be welcome uh, and ha have cleared, uh, met the conditions uh, spelled out in this letter. I'm sure there's many people across the country who would have met the conditions spelled out in the letter. There's, you know, there's many members of parliament that are Muslims themselves, um, you know, mm -hmm. and they come to the mosque, you know, as, as Muslims, not as, as MPs. Um, so I think it's really up to the institutions themselves uh, to have conversations with individuals that want to come to the mosque and really talk about, you know, what are the different conditions. If different individuals, and this really applies to everybody, if people who want to come to the mosque, who want to speak to the congregation, um, you know, in a public setting, uh, you know, if they adhere to uh, those basic values of, of humanity, of making sure that the hungry are fed, of making sure that people are taken care of, making sure that we're doing everything we can to, to prevent, uh, you know, people dying, then people are welcome. So uh, it's not really for us as individuals at the MCCM or anybody else to say what one institution should do or another. This is really a universal sort of organic outpouring of the Muslim community in a really difficult time, just trying to navigate uh, a very difficult situation and asking those that come to the mosque to affirm the values that really underpin this month. You're speaking to us now from Toronto, but you were in London, Ontario earlier today uh, for the court ruling uh, in the horrible killing of the Ofsal family in London, Ontario. The judge designated this a clear act of terrorism in their view. Uh, how do you feel about that finding from the court today? Um, we're relieved. Uh, it's, it's been an extremely difficult time for many members of the Muslim community in London and across the country, but especially the family of those who were murdered uh, by a terrorist. And the judgment confirms something that we all knew, which is violent acts of white supremacy uh, are in fact terrorism. And so we hope that this provides those who've lost loved ones some level of comfort and uh, that justice has been done. And uh, now we really look forward to the future of working with Canadian society to ensure that Islamophobia as a phenomenon that we've seen kills uh, is is really stamped out in in our nation. Just just on that, like when people see this and see this designation, I mean, what I mean, what lessons, what, what message do you hope uh, uh, people take uh, from this finding today? Killing people because of who they are is absolutely unacceptable. I mean, we live in Canada. It's a diverse country. It is a modern country. It's a Western country. It's a secular country. Uh, you know. In Canada, you we don't treat people based off of the color of their skin. Uh, we don't we don't we don't use things like their religion or other markers, uh, you know, to oppress people or harm people. In Canada, you know, when we say that every last single Canadian that their lives matter, that their property is sacred, that their lives are sacred, that the justice uh, that the uh, that the justice system is really going to be committed to upholding the security of all Canadians. And in this particular case, um, you know, this was really done in a way to terrify Muslims across the country. Uh, when you, if you listen to uh, what the judge said when she rendered her verdict, uh, she really made it clear that this was a textbook case of terrorism, where somebody committed an act of violence in the name of spreading a violent ideology in order to terrify a population. And what we saw today is, as Canadians, that's not who we are. We take care of all of us. Every Canadian is equally valuable. And the institutions of our country are committed to upholding those fundamental values and, and rights that we see in our charter. So as Muslim Canadians, and I think as Canadians in general, just in the country, I think we can smile on this verdict and really use this as a platform to continue to build closer ties between various communities. Stephen Brown, CEO of the National Council of Canadian Muslims. Thanks again for your time today, sir.